Hello, I'm Lake McGee. And I'm Samantha Bowers. And welcome to Show Me Chefs. high in today's semi-final round. Our chefs today have the opportunity to bring two special cooking items with them to the kitchen. They will then go through three rounds of cooking and present their dishes to the judges. The winner of today's semi-final round will move on to the finals and compete for the grand prize of $3,000. Today's show features two prominent chefs from the Springfield area. Our first chef is Chef Grant Smith from the University Plaza Hotel. Our next chef is Tony Garcia from Avanzari. So Tony, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? I'm Chef Tony, and um, I'm on Alvin Saris, and I opened in 2002, and I love cooking, so um, there we go. Okay, are you look excited? I'm ready. ready? Since yep. the last time you were here, you feel... that guy right there. Ready? I'm ready. Okay, well since the last time you were here, do you feel like maybe you have an upper hand on anything? A little more experience? Uh, not really. I think um, I'm in a challenge today. I think he's ready for me, and, and um, let's see if I can do it. Okay, well good luck to you today. Chef Grant, are you excited about today's competition? Dude, I'm ready to go. Okay. Do you know Chef Tony? No, I've never met the guy before, but he seems pretty nice and funny. Uh, look forward <laughs> to competing with him. Okay, well good luck today. Great. Today we have three judges who represent many facets of work from around the Springfield area. Our judges today are Marina Backus from Circle B Ranch, Chris Perkins, owner of Express Foods, and Carol Dryling, lead chef at Sheila's Place. Lakin, back to you. Things are changing up for our appetizer lightning round. Chefs, you will have 20 minutes to make a specific appetizer. The winner of the round will be able to take a tool away from the opponent's station for the entree round. Chefs, this round you will be making the perfect crepe using products from Circle B Ranch. Okay, chefs, you ready to draw? Who wants to go first? I go first. You go first? Okay. I want to get him nervous. Oh. <laughs> All right, Chef Grant. Sweet Italian sausage. Okay, cured bacon. Why well, didn't get the pork in the lung? Here we go. Okay, chefs, you will have 20 minutes to create your crepes. If you're ready, your time begins now. Coming up on Show Me Chefs, the competition really gets cooking as our chefs try to make the perfect crepe.
let's learn a little more about Circle B Ranch. With Circle B Ranch, uh, we operate a 90-acre uh, uh, pasture-raised, natural-raised hog farm. Another thing that's uh, helped our business success has been our, our line of sauces, uh, a tomato marinara sauce, barbecue sauce, steak and chop sauce, and a uh, pre-cooked Italian-style meatball. We're animal welfare approved, uh, humane raised and handled approved, which means a third party comes and inspects our farming practices. We had been ho hobby farmers for years back in New Jersey, so we knew the basics of what uh, animals needed for uh, you know, a healthy lifestyle. So we, uh, we employed that here and we decided that hogs were the way to go. We started with uh, 10 gilts and, uh, and one boar and in four years you know, built it up to uh, uh, we're well over 300 hogs here at any one time. We breed, farrow, and raise right here. We don't bring any feeder pigs in, you know, nothing like that. Give the pig the essentials that it needs. Give it the, uh, you know, good, good water, good food, good fencing, and an environment that it's going to be happy in. Our philosophy is a happy hog is a good tasting hog. So if Grant, you doing okay over here? Yeah, I'm doing good. How are you doing? Pretty good. good. Can you tell me a little bit about what you're going to be doing? Um, I'm just going to do a circle stuff crepe with some Italian sausages. Haven't really decided what my all my vegetables are going to be, but it's definitely going to have some mushroom in it. So we'll just see where I go from there. Okay, well, good luck. Chef Tony, I'm what you got ready. going on? I'm going to make some bacon and mushrooms, and I'm going to put a little bit of Italian flavor in there, so let's see if I can do it. I'm going to do the mushrooms, the pep, uh, bell peppers, and my, uh, tomatoes. And now we're going to put a little bit of cheese in the bacon. So I'm going to try to put the bacon on the crepes around it, so if I can do that. Okay, well with that being said, you guys have 13 minutes and 25 seconds. All right. Ah, come on, baby, be nice to me. I really like how that looks. Yeah, it's uh, some compote that's gonna go over the top of my crepes here. Okay, so the last time you were here, you defeated your opponent and got in the groove of things. Are you feeling like that groove's coming back? Yeah, I think that groove's starting to settle in. I just hope I don't get too overconfident this round. This guy looks pretty tough over there. Well, you've got things started on your plate already. Chef Grant well, doesn't. I gotta, <clears throat> I gotta get the cheese to melt inside the crepe before I put the sauce in there. Okay, is there anything you're worried about not uh, working out? It's, uh, this one needs to cool down a little bit before I grab it, but it all worked out. Okay, well, good luck to you guys. Thank you. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, 
four, three, two, one. Time's up, knives down. Chefs, you were told to create the perfect crepe using the given mystery ingredients. The time has now come to present to the judges. The judges will be grading your dishes on several factors. The presentation, the aroma, the taste, and use of the mystery ingredients given. The judges also have up to two bonus points that they can give to a chef of their choosing. Chef Grant, please tell the judges what you've prepared for them. All right, today I brought for you just a traditional French crepe stuffed with a sweet Italian sausage that I drew from the basket with a nice saute of micro portobello mushrooms deglazed with a little bit of red wine, tossed with a little bit of sharp aged uh, white cheddar. Um, and then on top I've got just a little bit of uh, blueberry, raspberry, uh, Sauvignon Capenlon, uh, just reduction in berry compote to go with it to try and sweeten things up and balance the flavor. The crepe is really well done. Um, I'm not real fond of the sweet on top, but that's just my opinion. But I think it goes real pretty well with the sausage because it's sweet on sweet. You know, probably would have rather seen maybe a little cheese or maybe a different type of sauce on top of it. Thank you, Chef Grant. You may return to your station. Chef Tony, please tell the judges what you have made for them today. I did the crepes. It started with crispy bacon, which is like, it really crispy, so it's going to be a little bit crispy, and uh, a little bit of bourbon cheese in, this, in the inside to melt it. And I did some vegetables, trying to get a little sweet to put on the crepes, but without putting any sweet in there. So I did the bell peppers and the mushrooms, and um, the base in there is going to be oregano. So you're going to get a little bit of the oregano. Um, things come out with the mushrooms and the bell peppers, kind of go well together, kind of like a little Italian style, and I put a little piece of bacon on top with the cheese on top. So uh, I couldn't do anything extra to it because there'll be, there be too much to it, so I hope, I hope you guys like it. Judge Chris, what are your thoughts on the appearance of this dish? Uh, the presentation is very nice. Uh, it looks very appetizing. Judge Marina, how do you feel about his use of the bacon? Thank you, Chef Tony. You may return to your station. Thank you so much. Okay, judges, who have you chosen as the winner of our appetizer lightning round? Well, first of all, Great job, both you chefs. Uh, but the winner is Chef Tony. Congratulations, Chef Tony. What is it that you're taking from Chef Grant? Let's, how do you call that, buddy? Uh, it's an infusion bottle. You use nitrous oxide in it, and it, you, you can do whipped creams, foams, infusions with any types of oils. Coming up, the chefs prepare to square off in our entree round. Welcome back to Show Me Chefs. Before the break, our chefs competed in the appetizer lightning round and had to create the perfect crepe. As the winner of the lightning round, Chef Tony has chosen to take away Chef Grant's foaming can for the entire duration of the entree round. Now is the time for the entree round. Each chef will have 40 minutes to prepare an entree using the mystery ingredients. Chefs, your ingredients are tomato jalapeno jam from Red Top Oven, kiwi and quinoa from our pantry provided by Mama Jeans, and the highlighted ingredient, pompano fish from Express Food. Okay, chefs, you will have 40 minutes to complete your entrees. Your time starts now. I know that one's there somewhere. Now we're in business.
Thomas has two to kill. You like it? Some little papers. Let's hear about one of our food sponsors, Red Top Oven. I grew up with a grandmother and a mother that gardened, huge gardens, and we had everything fresh and it went into the freezer or they made products out of it. So that is my philosophy. We make sauerkraut, fruit jams, pepper jams, salsa, marinara, zucchini relish, Guinness mustard, barbecue sauce. Right now, Farmer's Market of the Ozarks is where we're selling on Saturday mornings from uh, 8 a.m. till 1 p.m. We also have some of our products in, at Harriman Meat Store, which is on Battlefield Road. Across from hy -Vee. Um Metropolitan Farmer Carries are, are good. Earlier in the show, Chef Tony got to take away one item from his opponent. We'll see how Chef Grant is doing. I'm doing fine. How are you doing? I'm doing great. All right, so you got your pompano. It is a saltwater fish. It's very tricky to bone. It's flat. It does not have scales. Okay, well, good luck. Thank you. Chef Tony. Can't find what you're looking for? Can't find wine. Wine. That's okay. White wine. Chicken broth. I guess All you're right. going to have to do without, right? Plan B. Okay, plan B it is. What's your plan B? Well, I'm supposed to do caper sauce, but I can still do caper sauce without the whole enchiladas. So I got it. Okay. The diced tomato, capers, of the fish, onions, garlic. Okay. Well, since you got to take away one item from Chef Grant, do you feel a little up? You have the upper hand, or? No, I don't think so. He's too good, but it's okay. I'm still going to be able to do it. I think. If I can pull it off, it's going to be nice. Okay, well, good luck. I'm going to need it. I had to change something here, so. Chef Grant, you decided to fillet yours. Is there a reason? Yeah, I'm going to do a roulade with it. A roulade? Yep. I was going to try and do it two ways, but that skin just wasn't agreeing with me today. So I decided to say no to that. Let's find out about Express Foods. Well, my name is Chris Perkins. I'm the owner operator of uh, Express Foods Distribution and Catering. And we are a uh, seafood uh, distribution company. I got into this aspect of it um, because I spent a lot of time in the South and I uh, noticed a serious void of, of quality uh, seafood products in the Ozarks. Our focus is uh, wild caught American seafood, uh, everything's sustainable and good for the environment. We're in about 24 different grocery stores and restaurants right now. Now some of our biggest accounts are Bass Pro and Mama Jeans and uh, we do a handled for the state area. So it keeps us busy.
Are Judge Chris, <laughs> our highlighted ingredient is pompano from Express Foods. What are your thoughts on that? How do you think that the chefs are going to prepare it? Uh, well, they both have very different approaches on how they're going to prepare it. And uh, as far as visually, all we can really see now is what uh, Chef Grant is doing uh, since Chef Tony has his fish in the oven. So uh, be interesting to see. It will be interesting. And Judge Carroll, what are your thoughts on the use of the kiwi in the entrees? I, I really never had kiwi with, with the fish before, so I'm excited to find out what that's going to taste like. It'll definitely be a unique flavor combination, mm -hmm. something different. Yes, yes, I, I like kiwi, so it'll be interesting to see what that tastes like. Yeah. All right, there's nothing. Over there, chef. What am I doing over here? Well, I'm going to try and crack a coconut. It's... There we go. Let's take a moment to get to know our chefs. My name is Grant Smith. I work at the University Plaza Hotel and Convention Center here in Springfield, Missouri. We're a large catering venue for the Southwest Missouri area. We have one of the largest convention meeting space in Southwest Missouri. We also have a small restaurant dinner. That's primarily one of my focuses because I deal with the comp breakfast side. So I fix breakfast for all the hotel guests each and every day. And then I turn over Monday through Friday our lunch daytime restaurant. The most rewarding thing I definitely think is opening up people's minds to what they like and what they don't like. I know that's one thing that I highly enjoy is stepping away from American cuisine and opening other people up to Asian cuisine or to more authentic Mexican cuisine. I really like Pacific Rim and Asian Continental because there's so many fusions of flavors that just go hand in hand with each other. I would love to open up my own corporation that gives back to missions um, and help people in need. It's not really all about getting rich and getting famous. It's about supporting the people that you care about and that you love through that and using your skills for them. My name is uh, Tony Garcia and I'm chef owner of Ansares. I'm from Mexico. I grew up in Chicago. Bob Noble, which is Noble and Associates, they brought me here in Springfield. I always, uh, for some reasons, I always love cooking. I didn't mean that I'm going to be, I didn't know if you're going to be good out of it or anything, but I was always, I always love cooking. I was, I always cook, I always do stuff since I was little, you know, so I don't know why. I was, I just always love to cook, so. Because I know when I bring you something to the table, I know it's the best quality I was able to bring you to the table. Since the bread, since the olive oil, since the sauces, pastas, everything. I think I won't change anything. I just keep doing the same what I'm doing, and uh, if it's more work, I'm just gonna keep doing it.
30 seconds, chef. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Time's up. When we return, our chefs will present to the judges. Chefs, you were given mystery ingredients from Express Foods and have created an entree. The time has now come to present to the judges. Chef Grant. What have you made for them today? Well, today I've prepared uh, kind of an islandy mixed with new age feel on a uh, pompano roulade. I mixed some plantains, kiwi, a little bit of onions and some coconut water in with some panko breadcrumbs just to kind of give a nice little stuffing to uh, enhance the citrusness. And then I did a little uh, gastrique over the top of it with the red top jalapeno jam. And then on the side you have a quinoa that's been tossed in coconut water, kiwi, and just a little bit of salt and pepper. And then you have a fresh saute of kale with a little bit of that uh, jalapeno tomato jelly on top of it to try and keep it nice and fresh. Presentation is wonderful. Really like the color scheme of it all. Just blends in together very nicely. Judge Chris, how do you feel about Chef Grant's use of the pompano? Uh, he did well. Uh, the stuffing's great. The fish is not overcooked. And uh, you can definitely reminds me of being in Florida. The citrus vibe to it. Thank you, Chef Grant. You may return to your station. Chef Tony, you may now present your dish. Well, I did the whole pampano. So the whole pampano, you put salt, black pepper, and um, marinated in the inside a little bit with so, uh, a little bit of rosemary, put the potatoes, the onions inside, and the olive oil, and I put some pieces of whole garlic inside. And um, you can see when there was done roasted whole, I take the skin, the bones, put it there. So it's technically no oil in it, and I uh, said so when I did the sauce, the sauce a little olive oil, garlic, capers. I did like a little citrusy flavor to it because I did the jalapeno, tomato jalapeno there. And I did the, um, the artichoke cards, white wine, and um, the orange juice, lemon juice. And I squish it in there and a little, a little bit of water just to just thin it up a little bit. It's supposed to be pretty light, refreshing. And you can see the, um, when I did it, kind of like a semi salad it's kind of like a warm temperature. So it's going to be a little hot, but it's not going to be it's just a warm temperature to it. So I hope you enjoy it. Judge Marina, what are your thoughts on the presentation of this dish? I think it's beautiful. It's very different from the other chef. Judge Chris, what are your thoughts on Chef Tony's use of the pompano? Very well cooked. It's moist. It's tender. Thank you, Chef Tony. You may return to your station. When we come back, the chefs gear up for the dessert round. Welcome back to Show Me Chefs. Our chefs have gone through two timed rounds of cooking where they created an appetizer and an entree for our judges. Now is the time for the dessert round. In honor of the semifinals, we're putting another twist on our dessert round. Chefs, each of you will spin a wheel to decide which wine or port you will have to use as your highlighted ingredient. You will also be given other mystery ingredients to incorporate into your desserts. All of the wines and ports here today are provided by Missouri State University's Winery and Distillery. Okay, Chef Grant, you're up first. Which one are you hoping for? I, it's going to be fun working with whichever one I get. Hopefully he doesn't That's get to pick you. mine for. <laughs> Chef Grant, you will be using the port wine. I already got my port, but it's alright, buddy. I'll make something up. Chef Tony? You will be using the vanilla bean wine. Now it's the time for the mystery ingredients. Chefs, your ingredients are gluten-free animal crackers, cream cheese, and green tomatoes from our pantry provided by Mama Jean. Okay, chefs, in this round you will have 30 minutes to complete your desserts. If you're ready, your time starts now. All right, judges, what do we think about these mystery ingredients? Judge Marina, you mentioned before the chef started cooking that you thought that the gluten-free animal crackers would be a struggle. How do you think that the chefs are going to incorporate these into their dessert? I would like to see them either make a cracker base for, with 
them for a pie or a tart. Judge Chris, do you think anyone has an advantage, Chef Tony with the vanilla or Chef Grant with the port? Well, <clears throat> port is a, traditionally used in a lot of dessert dishes. Um, the vanilla is, seems to be pretty strong according to Chef Tony. So, It'll be interesting to see what they come yeah. up with. <laughs> Judge Carol, what about you? What are your thoughts on the mystery ingredient combination and the two wines that are shown? Well, um, vanilla, I did, that's going to be a challenge to, to uh, cook with that, and I'm sure. I just want to know how he's going to make a green tomato taste like an apple. <laughs> ah, that'll be interesting. <laughs> I think it should be interesting. <laughs> Definitely. Do you, do you judges think that time is going to be an essence here? We yeah, have 30 not minutes. Desserts. desserts are usually pretty fast. Pretty fast. I think, I think I can do it. You think they can do yep. it? Whoa. Whoa, what? Almost cut my finger. Cut your finger? Yeah, almost. It's not a good idea. I know, but man, I give it up too quick. Let's find out more about Missouri State University's winemaking program at the Dar School of Agriculture. We are in a vineyard at the State Fruit Experiment Station, part of Missouri State University, the Dar School of Agriculture. The State Fruit Experiment Station was formed to support the fruit growing industry in southern Missouri. We grow primarily fruit crops for experimentation as well as demonstration. This is a, a certified vineyard. When it get ripe, you know, we'll uh, We'll harvest them and they'll usually go to the winery or if they they don't need them there and then we sell them through the office to the public. We have a winery as well as a distillery and the neat thing about the distillery is we actually incorporate other fruit crops in our distilled product line. Our students who are working in viticulture can see the whole process from the plantings to the winery and even marketing since we sell our product. So we sell wine on site, but we also have two locations in Springfield, Brown Derby International House of Wine, as well as um, hy V. Did you put it in with the uh, other wine and brown sugar? I got red wine, because I wanted it to look red on the plate. Uh-huh. So you added it to the wine? The I added it to the wine. Okay. Um, because it's brandy and it's really, really, yeah, see it is really not, it's nothing got to do with dessert, <laughs> but I'm going to make it work. I'm going to make something that uh, I had to come out a way that I can make that sweeter to use the cream cheese. That's okay. a different, different deal that I'm going to use right now. So I don't have time to do a tomato pie. It's not, mm -hmm. not enough time to do it. Uh, so I got to come up with something without the crust but I'm still going to do it. Let's put a little more. bigger.
That's ready. Going in the oven. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Time's up, tools down. Chefs, the judges will now grade your final dishes. Chef Grant, please present your dish. So I've gone for kind of a throw on a crostini, basically, which is usually an appetizer with the fried tomato to try and give you that crunch and sweet and just get the basic tomato flavors in there. And then I went with a uh, cream cheese port wine mousse um, and then on the side you've got a port wine and green tomato chutney um, and then on top you can see a little bit of sponge sugar work I was going for a chip just didn't set up quite in time for me to chip it out and then there's just some uh, toasted crumbles of the gluten-free animal crackers so hope you enjoy Judge Chris how do you feel that the wine complements the dessert? Well port wine is very very strong to begin with, and you can definitely uh, taste it in the dessert still, but uh, it gives it a bold flavor. I know you were having left some trouble with the foamer, but the taste is really good, and I really like the the crunchiness of the of the sponge sugar. It really complements it really well, and I think you did a great job with the reduction. Thank you, Chef Grant. You may return to your station. Chef Tony, please tell the judges what you have made for them. I technically, I was thinking this is maybe a green pear, you know, instead of thinking about tomatoes, so I think it's a pear and I bread it. Uh, put a little cream cheese on top with the, with the brandy that I put on top on the cream cheese, put it in the oven, a little chocolate chips, kind of give you a little different taste to it. And um, the brandy, red wine reduction sauce that I put in the bottle, uh, it was pretty, a little bit hard to kind of combine those two together, but I think they got pretty close. So let's see what you think. Judge Marina, what are your thoughts on the presentation of this dessert? I think it's beautifully presented. Um, I really like the berries and everything. Judge Chris, how does the flavor of the vanilla work with the tomato? Uh, he made it. He made it work. Um, it's it's amazing, the presentation, the taste, um, and uh, I mean it, it. It transforms it into a, uh, what you don't expect it to taste like. So. Thank you, Chef Tony. You may return to your station. When we come back, the judges will present their final decision. Chefs, you were told to create a three-course meal using the mystery ingredients provided. The judges have tasted and discussed your plates, and they have decided on who will go on and who will go home. Our judges revealed earlier that Chef Tony was the winner of the appetizer round. Judge Marina, will you please reveal the winner of the entree round? Both dishes were wonderful. I mean, they were really, really good. And the winner is... Chef Grant. Judge Carroll, will you please reveal the winner of the dessert round? I think this has been so amazing that you guys could come in here and just get thrown everything you were thrown and come up with the best food I've ever tasted in a long time. <laughs> the dessert round is Chef Tony. Thank you. Judge Chris, will you please reveal the overall winner of today's competition? <clears throat> well, first of all, chefs, this is some of the best food I've had in a long time, and I'm honored to be here. And uh, the Ozarks are lucky to have you guys cooking here locally. 
Um, you both did really well. Um, uh, Chef Tony, you won. Thank you. Good job, man. Um, Chef Grant, unfortunately, you did not show the judges enough to move on to the final round of Show Me Chefs. Congratulations, Chef Tony. You'll be moving on to compete in the final round of Show Me Chefs for the grand prize of $3,000. Thank you. Are we ready? Thank you so much. Thank you for your time, guys. Another intense day of competition by two excellent chefs. Unfortunately, only one can move on to the finals. We'd like to take a moment to thank all of our donors and sponsors for the ingredients used today. Join us next week for another exciting episode of Show Me Chefs.